Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled, I'm Peter, that is Connor and we are going to talk about Frequency, episode 1 of season 1 because it's the pilot and it's uh, from the CW and this is based on a movie that came out like 15 years ago, something like that. Yeah, early 2000s I think. Yeah, i never seen the movie. Me either, it seems to be quite a small movie really. Yeah. Uh, but as with all first episodes, we will uh, start spoiler free and get into spoilers halfway through. We'll give you warning. The plot of the this story, I was going to say the movie there, but I mean the movie as well, I assume. But is that a woman in present day using a ham radio contacts her father twenty years ago uh, in nineteen ninety six? Yeah, as far as I'm aware, the biggest difference from the movie is that the woman was a man in the movie. Okay, and I assume the years were different because it was made yeah. like two, well, yeah. two or whatever it was. Uh, honestly, one of the first thoughts I had watching this was this weird feeling of uh, time. I was like, wait a minute, Twitter. Because the character mentioned she's 28, and I'm like, wait a minute, that's only a year older than me. And I do, it, it felt surreal that I'm now watching TV shows where the main character, who are, who's a detective, is. In my age range. It's just, and it's, here you are. And here I am, doing nothing with my life. Yes, thank you for that. <laughs> no, but it was, just, it was, kind of, it was weird because like, they said 1996 was 20 years ago, which it obviously is if you actually think about it, but it was like, well, that doesn't. I was like, that doesn't seem right. I was around in 1996. Do you know what seems weird to me? What? Were people still using ham radios in 96? The, I can tell you they... At least in movies and TV they were, because uh, Contact starring Jodie Foster was around that time. That was all right. I'll allow it. That was ninety six, ninety seven, something like that. So, yeah. Fair enough. I'll allow it then. It yeah. seems like something that was like another, you know, ten years before that. When you think about it. But I, I think certain professions still used them, and I think it was certainly people who did it as a hobby, as her dad did. It was still mm. very much a thing. It's probably still a thing today. There's probably still people who uh, probably is, yeah. like to tinker with them. But that, that was just one of my first thoughts. I was like, I was this weird feeling of like, oh, crap, this, this is weird. I'm like practically the same age as the main character. So when she's thinking back to her childhood, I'm like, I was about that age in 1996. This is kind of weird. Uh, oh. But. People, people in the late twenties can probably sympathise with that right now. Uh, which you're not quite there, but you're not far off. Ah, I got what five years or so. I'm just, good. Just, just you wait until. Yeah, that's not gonna like take long, is it? No, just you wait until twenty twenty two, and something like this comes up. You'll be feeling the exact same thing. Well, I'm twenty two now, so. No, twenty twenty two. The year twenty twenty two. Right, I follow you now. I was like, 2022? I thought you were doing like an age range. I was like, what? Anyway, Connor, did you, uh, did you like the episode? Yeah, it was alright. I mean, it <laughs> it suffered from a lot of pilot issues, I think. But overall, I quite like most of the ideas. If, if they are feeling a little overdone at this moment in time. I, I, yeah, I will say that it did occur to me like halfway through this episode... That a lot of the things I was thinking about and seeing, I'd already thought about and saw in Timeless, and we're already kind of seeing it in the Flash. Like, there's a lot of things doing time travel right now and doing yeah. a lot of similar kind of themes and ideas. That said, though, I did kind of like it as well. I, uh, I thought some elements felt a little bit rushed, and that just kind of comes with a pilot. When I feel like, why, why do no networks do the double pilots anymore? It used to work know. so well. Lost I th- French. I think it's because they're so set in like, like this followed Arrow, right? Sure, yeah. So they're so set in having Arrow in its time slot because it's one of their big hitters for the network that they can't afford. They don't want to afford to push well, something a week. It's easy. You just start this a week earlier and give it the full two hours. Mm. I mean, you could do that, but why would why would they think like that far ahead? Because that would involve people with brains. But it just, no, like, I, I just, I don't get it. Like, it, they used to do this for everything. Every, yeah. Especially sci-fi shows that had these sort of, like, weirder Big premises. ideas, yeah. Yeah. Like, they would get the two-hour pilot, and it would give it time to actually sort of set up the plot without feeling rushed, because it'd have the full length of it to do that, and then I feel I like... I wonder, you know how you just mentioned it was particularly sci-fi shows? Yeah. I wonder if they feel like now audiences 
have had so much sci-fi over the past like five, seven years, whatever, that we're kind of just okay to roll with it at this point. That we don't need as much time to get our heads around the core ideas as we used to as a general public. Yeah, but that's not my my problem. Isn't that I'm not understanding the ideas? My problem is is that they're not presented at a pace that feels natural. Yeah. So no, no, doesn't help with that. If that's their argument, then it's all it's just bollocks. No. No. The, the problem fair. is the pacing, and every single one of these pilots feels this way. It Timeless does. felt this way. Uh, even even the Flash, you know, when that premiered, that felt that way. I was like, this should have been two hours. Yeah, no, no, it's the last two or three years. It's been a common problem. Yeah, every pilot's felt like they're, they're squeezing too much setup in one episode. It's just a thing. But anyway, um, no, I like the ideas they're playing with. They 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 actually played a lot more with like effect in the future or effect in present day by like her telling him to do things in the past and you know that sort of thing than I was expecting. And I actually kind of like that it set up a plot line that feels like it will be the season plot. You yeah. Know, I, I was worried that it was going to feel too procedural. It doesn't feel like it has that much procedural elements at all, really, compared to compared to what I was yeah. expecting. Yeah, it, it certainly feels like it's going to... It has this one big case they're going to deal with. There may, there may be some small cases spread out within as well that you know they can tackle with, but... It feels like right away it's set up. No, this is the this is the story of this show. This is the story of this season. It, I mean, I have no idea what season two would be, <laughs> but I guess that's that's good. That's you know they can surprise me and do something. It's something, it's something for the writers to worry about in about nine months' time. Aye, aye. Probably, probably before that actually. Well, yeah. Dep- do, depends how likely they are to get renewed. Really. Sure. Sure. Although this is the CW, so. They're probably all right. Yeah, they're, they're probably fairly safe. Unless this gets no people watching, they're probably safe. Yeah. But uh, no, I, I, I thought uh, acting was fine. I thought both the, you know, R- Ramy, who's the the woman in the present day, and her dad Frank in the nineteen ninety six. I thought they were both good. Yeah, definitely. I, th- I thought they they both handled it fairly well. What one of the things that you know one of the scenes that I was expecting to possibly really ring false was the. The moment where they both kind of realise who they're talking to, mm. and it didn't feel that bad. Like it, it didn't feel as corny as you expected. Yeah, I think because they they both, they both played it like no, this isn't right. No, you, the other person's playing a prank or someone's yeah, they doing both something. Yeah. Naturally, didn't believe it. They didn't jump to go and oh, of course this must be what's happening. Yeah, of course. Now. As much as it did kind of rush to the point where they did both believe it, just because it was a pilot again and they had to get through it so we could get on with the premise of the show, uh, the way they actually did sort of confirm it, I liked, which we'll say for spoilers, but... Um, yeah, there was legitimate reasons why they would actually believe the other person. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So, no, it was good. I, I, I don't actually know how much more I can say without going into spoilers, but it, it was... It was engaging. It brought up some interesting ideas. It, you know, I it gave me some sense of the supporting cast. Like she's got our partner who used to work with her dad. You know, when he was alive, he's been a cop for a long time. It gave us, you know, uh, our best friend Gordo, which just is a great name. Yeah, Gordo. You know, uh, it, it gives a sense of these supporting cast, both in the present day and the past. And it set up these different ideas of like, uh, you know, things changing depending on things that happened in the past. What, what I actually um, almost had a problem with at first because for some reason it didn't click with me as to why this was the case. But when she goes and sees her mother, this isn't a spoiler. But when she goes and sees her mother early on in the episode, I was like, something's off about this mom. What's going on here? And I was looking at her going. She looks the same age, but she's got like some old makeup on. Why is that? Like, does this actress just look remarkably young, or why? Why are they doing this? And then it went to pre- uh, like the past. It went to nineteen ninety six, and we've seen her be the same age as the father. I'm like, oh, of course they have to cast a young actress because they have to do this time period yeah. as well. And I felt like an idiot for not realizing that. But for a good minute, I was sitting going, why does she look so young? Yeah, until it flashes back and yeah. you get it. Was it oh, was it, oh, that's why they've cast a young actress to do this. Cause... And then it's like, yeah, fine. Got to get yeah. around with summer. That's fine, yeah. 
but but for a minute, I I it was solely seriously like you know. I was really wondering where you were going with this at first. It was hampering my enjoyment for a minute, and then I clicked as to why they were doing that. I was like, oh, right, okay. I just thought they made such a weird call. Like, you know, it was doing that thing where you always say, like, they always cast younger, like, for the girlfriend, for, like, a middle-aged guy, because mm. they always want the younger, more attractive actress, and they're, they're always very, like, discriminatory with age when it comes to but it females. It didn't make sense for that reason, considering they'd put all the, make- like, the old age makeup on. Yeah, but that's what I was thinking. I'm like, did they try to make the old mum look hotter by casting an actress and just putting some grey in her hair and a couple of wrinkles? Is that what they've done here? But no, it makes sense now. It yeah. makes sense. So I point. will say, I really like the the rules of the time travel stuff they set up. Mm. I say time, it's... It's less time travel than the but other shows. It's, it is less... T- there's not, there's not travelling going on, but... The past can still change and then affect the future. It's more timelines than time travel. Yeah, but there is rules that she can't like go further back again. It's like it's moving concurrently. Yeah, it's parallel. Yeah, it's parallel. It's exactly twenty years apart. So the date that it is in the present day is the date it was in nineteen ninety six, and when the day changes and moves forward, it does the same in the past. And it's yeah, I feel like the rules are really well established and they're yeah. decent rules. To be fair. Yeah. Yeah, they're not bad, and you know. Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure we can pick holes in them as the show goes on, and we as the sure. stuff to us. I, I feel like I can do that with pretty much anything with time travel rules. Yeah, so I would say it's worth checking out. Um, that this could end up in a great show. It could, or it could just be okay for. Yeah, forever. it depends what route they go going forward. If they kind of really play into this overarching story and go with that, and the impact of things in the past affecting things. Be, I think it could be really great. If it gets a bit procedural, I'll probably lose interest, though. Mm. I can see a bit of mix, though. I can still see them doing, like... I can like, see a mix. I just mean if it gets too procedural, I uh, can I can see losing interest. I'm pretty sure episode two will be a smaller... I mean, they'll mention, obviously, what, what's revealed towards the end of this episode, but I feel like episode two will probably be a smaller thing that they can solve in one episode. Probably. To set up the idea that they can, they can fix things and mm. whatnot. But no, so far I'm intrigued. So I would recommend checking it out. So I think we're going to spoilers now. So full spoilers for the episode one of uh, Frequency. So our dad died, right? He died like, the day after our birthday in 1996. Because the, the, the episode starts on our birthday in present day. Yeah, maybe it was two days later? I, one day, two days. You know, whatever yeah, it is. But it was right after our birthday. And she... Like, she starts talking to him over the radio, of course, and they do the whole thing where he plants something in the garden, like he used to do. Yeah, because she used to put a flag. No, he yeah. put the flag to say it was there. Yeah, yeah. And she finds a picture that he's taken with a newspaper, and it, it sort of like confirms, like, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that somehow they are talking to each other 20 yeah. years apart. And she did it by the with, the with the baseball. Yeah, it was. Yeah, she, like, told him all these scores and... Yeah, all these famous games and stuff. Yeah, and he was like, yeah. nah. Yeah, so that, that was all fine. Uh, but the actual plot of what's going on, though, is he, he's he's supposed to be killed in a couple of days because he's, he's an undercover cop, and we find out that he's going to be set up. But there's actually the, the cop that's overseeing him is actually uh, paid off by the bad guys, and he he's setting up to be murdered. And because she warns him and says, oh, you're shot at this location, and that he doesn't believe her, he like freaks out. But because he's heard this is where that happens, he's wet in advance and he's planted a gun just in case. Just in case she's right. Yeah, he's a smart guy. Because obviously yeah. he's paranoid. He's like, I'm not sure if this is believable, but I'm not going to take the risk if I'm going to die the next day. Yeah, yeah. So he, it's a very believable thing where he doesn't full on commit to believing it. But you know what? Just in case it's right, I'll put something in place that yeah that keeps me keeps me right. Because, because they mentioned that this killer, the Nightingale killer that was around back then, because they find a body early on in the episode of someone, and it's, it's been there for 20 years, you know. It, I, I will admit, I, I was starting to roll my eyes every time someone said something like, oh, we found a body, uh, you know, the you know the, the amount of uh, decomposition and so on. Oh, about 20, 25 years. I'm like, of course it's 20 years. Of course it is. Because that's exactly the amount of time it needs to be for it to be relevant to the, to the dad. I mean... Yeah, but 
how can they guess that quickly, considering it was in a swamp? It's like, you know, when things are in water and it decomposes at a completely different rate, and it's like... Yeah, true. Oh, in a swamp, surely it'd go faster. I really don't know the science behind it. I will just say, or I'll guess that being a homicide coroner, he's just seen a lot of dead bodies and he can eyeball it quickly. Yeah. I'll, I'll give him that one, I suppose. Yeah, because it looked like he'd been doing it for a long time. He did, because he was obviously around when the night... He was on the case the exactly. first time, yeah. like when this was actually happening 20 years ago, so... And he also found the the, the beads as well, which was, was the calling card. So he, maybe he's seen that first, and he looks like goes, yeah, that matches up, and that looks about the right time. Yeah, so, true. There we go. We've, we've solved the case there, Connor. What, what would have happened? Because obviously he was like, no, nah, I know about these rosary beads because I was here, and this wasn't like official. It was just... I kept in the records mm. but if if they found his body and he'd gone right there's rosary beads how long would it have taken them to check this against all their because presumably these 20 years ago would have been paper records and stuff how long would it have taken them to check against that to see if this matches anything um, or would would they have thought to check against something that like, like that would they have gone oh okay Tom, to be fair they didn't say they kept it out of the records they said they kept it out of the press yeah, yeah, but I mean, would they ch- would they think to go and check against all their records, and then how long would that take to go? Oh, this was this serial killer. If in this scenario, no one who worked on it then was still working now. Well, we know at least one detective was around back then, so chances are there would be someone around. And if there wasn't, once they'd figured out how long the body had been there, they'd have a time period, they'd have a time window to look at. It would narrow it down, obviously. Yeah, fair enough. Just seems convenient. Sure it is, but like, like I mean, this would be no doubt. Like, and this happens in real life. They'll find a body that's like part of a previous crime spree like years ago, and yeah, yeah, they'll just, eventually match just, up. Just wondering how long it would have taken. And oh, probably how much... a month, two months, something like that. Uh, time, good bit of time. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Sounds of my question. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, where was I going anyway? Yeah, so they, they found this body and. Aye, so we hear about this Nightingale killer that was active back then. Now, it's not actually related to the dad in any way, other than it was happening around that time. And the body itself is of a nurse. Yeah, because Nightingale killer always went after nurses. Yeah, and the nurse that they find, the body they find, is someone who worked in the same hospital as her mum. It just occurred nurse. to me. It just what? occurred to me that's why it's called the Nightingale killer. Nurses, Florence Nightingale. Yeah, you didn't get that? It it just clocked in my head. I was like, what? <sighs> <laughs> if you turn if you turn this video off and never come back, I don't blame you, people. I I really don't. I, I, I didn't think it mattered. I was like, ah, okay, that's the name. Who cares? Jesus Christ! It I... just clocked in my head though. Okay. <laughs> Connor's not playing with a full deck today. So. So right. So we've learned about this this killer who goes after nurses, right? So anyway, so he survives, he still gets shot, but he doesn't get, you know, shot repeatedly and dumped in a river like he did before, and when this happens, uh, Raimi gets, like, all these weird new memories flooding in of, like, these memories of her dad being there when she, like, graduated police academy and stuff like that, and all all these different life events, and it all came flooding in, and she even mentions, she actually clarifies something really quickly that I was, not confused, but uh, curious about was she's like oh i've got all these new memories and all these old memories all sort of coexisting yeah and i was like okay right because i was was like is she forgetting everything else then or like is I, I guess it's one of those things where because she was the cause and effect of of the change essentially yeah, she was directly with, involved it's the same with all time travel stories and the, the, the yeah. person who does it always remembers the original timeline yeah and everyone else Something is... you just have to go with. Yeah, it does. Well, it would be really unfulfilling if she did forget everything. It would, because she wouldn't know what was changed. It wouldn't make, It wouldn't have any impact. Exactly. So she has to remember stuff. And she finds out her dad is still dead in present day because he died in a car crash like five years ago. Still, he got an extra 15 years. It's not bad. Yeah, and she she's now got a life, like 15 years worth of memories. Yeah, yeah. She, he got to be there while she was growing up and... You know, it went to a graduation and, you know, all the other various things. So, you know, it's not bad, right? It's all a young I'd death. Call, I'd still call it a victory, though, overall. Yeah, so it's, yeah, 15 more years than it had. So, you know, it's a plus. Yeah. 
Although, of course, now she can just go on the radio and say, by the way, on that day, don't... Uh... <laughs> That's what I was just thinking. I was yeah. like, if she does that, can he just not crash? <laughs> yeah, she, she very well could. Unless he dies of a natural cause, she can keep fixing yeah. it, potentially. But given that it runs in real time, it won't be until she's in her mid-40s like, before she has to... That it'll fix it. She'll have to tell him, yeah. Well, no, because if, if, if she told him... She's still in 96 now, right? But uh-huh. if she told him in 96, he'd go, right, when I get to that day in, what, 2011, he'll just mark it in his head. Go, oh, right. Well, uh, okay, sure, he could, she could tell him just now. Sure, but as but... soon as she told him, it would take effect, surely. Well, no, it wouldn't. Oh, because, you it think she's... because it doesn't work like that in this. They're running parallel. Uh, We've seen yeah. this. We've, they've clearly shown this the rule, is that they run parallel. It's, it's not like as soon as she tells them, the entire thing changes. It, it, didn't, it didn't actually change until, until the actual event yeah, yeah you're right they're running concurrent they're not running yeah the past one isn't always finished just because we're in present day with this yeah it's... yeah smart rule making yeah so no yeah so she could tell him just now but it would more likely be a case of you, you might as well just remind them in like 15 years just you know yeah day before don't take the car out <laughs> yeah come on, just, you know, have, have a nice little walk <laughs> Um, but no, but th- then so began the sequence of uh, her constantly running into people, and th- like, and I could see all these things coming, like because they, they, they telegraphed that the mother is actually going to be killed. Because we see the mother and the daughter going to see the dad at at the hospital, and they're leaving, and you get this moment where you see the nurse hand over or something and gets her to go and take stuff, and we see the guy with the beads behind them. And you get, okay, right, so the killer's going to target her, and this, this is going to be the consequence. Because she saved him, like, fate has to take someone else. You know, it's like a yeah, it's, balance. I'm not even sure it's necessarily that. I think well, it's just... I, I'm not necessarily saying it is that, but that's immediately what I thought of when we seen that our mother was going to get killed as a result. See, I don't know, because obviously there was someone dead already, so the mother has just replaced someone anyway. So it's not like... It's an extra true, one. True, true. So, but it was... Obviously well, no, because but no, no, they... no, 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 no. But there is the extra ones because we find out the killer's been active for 20 years when, before he had been inactive for 20 years. He's taken a lot more lives because of this change. That is true. That is true, yeah. If anything, she is paying with interest. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but the the mother more directly... I, I don't think it's anything like that. It's just the... The chance that now, because they went to the hospital, whereas they didn't before, mm. is it's is it's the butterfly effect. Where yeah, of course, of course uh, it is. But yeah, yeah. Well, but what I was going to get to though, as you could see that coming, but I could also see her fiance not knowing her because she gets the yeah. dress on and she's going to the 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 dinner to meet his parents, and I'm like, ah, oh, he's not going to know her. That, this yeah, is going it's to so blatantly changed. obvious. I like the reason why. You know, like yeah. yeah. Like, it was that the the mother that that set them up. Yeah, yeah. They, they clearly explain that the reason why they never met is because they met when he was in an accident and our mother was the nurse that treated him, and that's how yeah. they ended up meeting. Uh, because she was already dead for however many years, that never happened. So yeah, it, it, it makes sense. Uh, which is one of the things we were talking about. Timeless. Not to spoil that. We won't spoil that show because we're not reviewing that show right now. But. One of the things we talked about in that was how oh there's all these butterfly effect things at the end of the episode and we don't know exactly how it affected it. Yeah, it's it pl- that plays it as more of a mystery, whereas yeah. this is no, this is exactly why this thing is changed, and I I kind of appreciate that. Well, it's just nice that they're both doing it differently, even though they're both playing with similar themes. That, like that is what, true. One of them's treating the actual time things as a mystery. Whereas this one's, the time things aren't a mystery, that's very clear, but what is a mystery is who is this killer, and why is he, you know... You know. This is more of just a, a murder mystery that happens to have some sci-fi elements. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, and we find out the body she found instead was her mother's. Which again, yeah. I could clearly see coming, but it, you know, it worked. It was, yeah, yeah. it makes sense. So, good man. Yeah, it was. Uh... I mean, I also like when she goes back to her like her uh, her garage oh. or sorry her garage, uh, which by the way I noticed the English character in this said garage, which I thought was funny. Yeah, I thought it was weird. What I liked about it though when she came back is you see that like she's been investigating the case of the killer because she's obviously 
even though she only like is getting her memories back of this like new timeline, she's clearly been obsessed with it and you know investigating yeah. him. Yeah, it's because obviously um, they said even though they never confirmed it until now, it was thought that this was the Nightingale killer that got her mum anyway. Yeah, because obviously they never found her, her body. Yeah, but obviously Nurse disappears that time. They're going to assume. Yeah. So that's that's probably why she's fixated on it. So we end with the, the nice moment of uh, her talking to herself as a kid because the dad's still in the hospital in the past mm. and she ends up talking to herself and herself's asking, are you an astronaut? And she has to sort of like, you know, t- tell your dad the friend on the radio says they need to talk right now. And it's just it's that final nice moment where she looks out into the uh, into the garage and the, the light of the, the radio is lighting up. Because apparently whenever he goes on to it, the, the entire thing lights up and the room yeah. lights up. Do you know what the, the one I really liked was? was um, so when the young her takes the radio to him in the hospital mm. and he winks at her and it means that she gets the memory then of yeah. him winking at her and, he, and she's the one that gets it in the present. I thought that was quite cool. Yeah, yeah, he's like proud of her because it's it's actually hard doing it for her. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's a nice little nice little touch. One thing I actually do want to bring up is uh, you said to me like before we recorded mm. that you really hated the uh, the sort of the montage playing you know, under the Wonderwall song yeah. by Oasis. Partly because you don't like that song, but partly because it's, it's... it's because it's always Wonderwall. <laughs> but you know what? I'm going to defend it here. Okay. The f- when that when that happens, when the Wonderwall kicks in and we get a little bit of a montage, that's when we first properly go back to 1996 and follow the dad. And that song is from that time period. I get that. It's just, it's so cliched. But that's the point. You instantly know what time period it is because the song is such a famous song from then. I know, I know. It makes sense. It works. It does, but I still, I can't excuse it. I'm sorry, would you want a Space Girl song instead? Yes, yes, I would. Well, you're just wrong. You're just wrong <laughs> in this case. <laughs> no, no, but in all seriousness, I just but think cut, cut us to 1996. All you hear is zigga zigga and whatever else. <laughs> I'll be so down for that. No, you're wrong. <laughs> oh man, just because I'm disappointed of, now that it wasn't that. <laughs> just because there's ginger representation in Space Girls for you, don't. Yeah, very diverse, very ahead of their time. <laughs> Oh dear. Oh. Anyway, uh, no, I, I enjoyed the uh, the episode. I'll, yeah, I'll, so did I. I'll be, I'll be to watch some more and see if it's uh, worth keeping up with for an ex- you know forever or till it's finished. <laughs> forever. That's a one <laughs> hell of a commitment. No, I'm not going to commit to forever. No show should run forever. Uh, hear that, Simpsons? No show should run forever. Yeah, the only exception I have to that rule is Doctor Who. In fact, speaking of Simpsons, Simpsons was already on like season seven by the time this. Well, yeah, well, the, the, in the past. Of yeah, this. in nineteen ninety six, yeah. Simpsons was already like seven years old by that point. Simpsons was basically as old as she is. It is, yeah. In fact, yeah. Simpsons had its first episode the year I was born. So there you go. It's as old yeah. as me. So. <sighs> Stupidly long. <laughs> Isn't it? All right, guys. Uh, <laughs> I guess that will wrap us up. We actually went quite long in that, so apologies if we droned on uh, a bit more than we usually do. But I guess we're just in that mood. Uh, but thanks for watching. Let us know what you thought of frequency in the comments below. Like and subscribe and all that stuff. It helps us out a lot. Get us on Twitter at mail underscore fuzz and uh, keep watching TV. We'll see you next time.